today I got a different setup, you could say. Not in the studio. Well, at least the art studio part of things. You can, yeah. So, obviously, we're in the Lego City, basically. So, I figured it'd be kind of fun to do a little bit of live streaming and doing some stop motion. So, basically, what we're going to run through is a bit of setup here. Of course, my dog's on the other, other setup of the lights. So, hopefully, there's no major jank here. So... We do have some pets that may or may not be joining in. Probably not as much as normal because obviously I'm in the basement. So hopefully the sound quality is not terrible. But I would expect it to be maybe a little more echoey than normal. So yeah. But we'll be setting up basically getting the characters ready for the next scene. Doing all the lighting and stuff like that. Now my furnace is going to kick in. So there's going to be that kind of unfortunately maybe in the background too. But yeah. Like I said before we're basically in a different environment. So that's why I'm a few minutes late. My microphone is basically set up on a chair. This is kind of hastily putting that back together just so I can try and make it on time. So, yeah. Well, once all that lighting and various other things are set up, we'll basically get ready for stop motion. You guys will actually get to see how painstakingly long and how slow all my characters essentially move. So, yeah. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to exactly get a plug-in for my laptop because everything is plugged in with all my lights. So, in my haste, I didn't have time to plug it in, so I'm going to have to kind of uh, babysit the computer here whilst I join you guys. So, I'm going to say hello. Hello, Holly. Yes, I know you're there. You want to come say hi to everybody? Yeah, you haven't gotten your hellos in yet. Here. Yes. <laughs> here. You want to get your smiles into the stream? Me. Come here. Yeah, you're just going to... Yeah, of course, you're going to waddle, waddle off on camera. There we are. We kind of, kind of get it, but yeah. There. You said hello to Holly, everybody, so, but I should say hi to hello everyone at this point. You're being very interrupted, per usual, okay? Yeah, big sleep bum. Okay, who do we got here? Moins Gaming and Toys. I can see, hello. Yes, uh, a little bit late today, I, I do apologize for that. Unfortunately, it's kind of my normal to a certain extent, so best to have both notifications turned on. But yeah, different environment today, so at least I have a little bit better of an excuse than normal. So, yeah, we're in the film set area, basically. So, yeah, I should probably, before I get too far into the stream too, music is all relatively free, and you'll find the com or find that stuff in the description below. So check it out if you enjoy the songs. Except for that, it's not a song. So, yeah, ignore that. And keep your gaming. Thank you for tuning in. As always, Cheetah Island, hello, and gaming with Adrian. Hello, thank you for, yeah, pointing out that I think I'm late. I, I'm here now. Better late than never. And King, or Claymation Zilla, thank you for tuning in. I think you're going to enjoy this stream, because, yeah, we'll be doing a little bit of stop motion, so I'm going to kind of blaze through, say hello to everybody, get a couple chance questions or things answered in the chat, and then we'll get started with things. Uh, first Godzilla toy. Nice. I still need to go Godzilla toy shopping, to be honest. I have not filled up any of my, yeah, lists, unfortunately, there. So, maybe if I can make good enough timing today on the stream, I'll do some digging through some of my toy collections, and maybe I'll find my old 1998 Godzilla remote controls, see if they still work. But seeing how I'm in the basement, I'll probably at least look for those after the stream is ended at the very least. Because, yeah, stop motion takes a lot of time to give a good reference to how long things will be. Usually my streams are about an hour long to an hour and a half. And we might get one second of footage out of that. Maybe half a second, basically. Because I also have to do a little bit of lighting setup. So there could be some moving around with the camera and stuff. Which is, I suppose, a bit of a teaser for or slash small celebration for the whole 4K thing that we recently hit because you guys wanted a house tour of my entire setup. So this is kind of like a beginning phase of that, I guess you could say. Oh, thank you. <laughs> awesome, thank you, uh, Godzilla 2024. Honestly, they're probably, yeah, a couple of my favorite characters. Part of me is like, yay, I spent two months making them, now it's time to have them destroy each other. So it's a little, yeah, it's something you kind of have to get used to as a claymation artist that you're going to be kind of ruining these things to a certain extent every time you play with them, especially in this manner. But it's still a lot of fun and usually the end result is still worth it. I did actually forget one thing I needed for Shima. I might have to go upstairs and grab some, like, ice particles, so there might be that too. 
because I have a couple special special ideas that I can get that cool frozen effect basically spreading along the ground and get a couple, you know, glamour slash showing off shots. I usually like to try and squeeze a couple of those into my animations. I think John the Triceratops is a good example last time where I was literally animating ripples of water. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, this is really unnecessary, but it looks cool. Can you make Godzilla 1998 and Godzilla 1962? I will add a couple points for each one of those for you. I believe Godzilla 98 is kind of top tierish, not quite like top of the list, but he's not far off. I think Kong and uh, Scar King, and along with Doug, I don't want to even mention Doug. We got too many Doug points at this point. I'll have to count Doug's next. I think I have enough actually clay for Doug, so we might actually get that very soon. So, yeah. For all the Doug fans in the chat, there you go. Yeah, little teaser. We might get Doug sooner than you expected. So, yeah. Now, as the uh, turtle edits, how long do you think it'll take? Uh, this entire animation, I can expect, is probably going to take me approximately a month. Hopefully not. I do have a decent backlog of videos and a couple other things that we'll be kind of going through. Whilst I'm in the product of making this animation, I'll be streaming things while I animate, and there will be, of course, daily short updates for the most part, as long as I can keep up that schedule. Unfortunately, it's been a little difficult, even kind of late on my shorts all the time. But, yeah, unfortunately, I'm a busy man. we got a lot on my plate, so. Speaking of which, I should probably... In cooperative. Okay, I've uh, lost you guys temporarily. Unfortunately, the tablet here doesn't exactly show me everything in the chat. So we're gonna do a little bit of organization in the meantime because this thing is apparently not going to cooperate. So we're working on basically a scene today that's fairly simple, nothing too complicated. I basically just want to get the kind of the city environment basically introduced, for lack of a better term. So I've done the introductions for each character for this particular animation already, which has taken approximately over 600 photos. <laughs> if you've paid attention to the photo count, that's a lot. There was a big roar, and that took quite a long time. I think I spent about 10 hours or 9 hours animating that single roar for Godzilla. Then straight after, diving into Shimo's, which was about 8 seconds. Didn't take nearly as long, but was still a pretty lengthy animation. So we'll be doing one maybe a little shorter, probably around in the three second marks is what this scene is going to be. So it's approximately going to be 100 to 75 frames. And basically it's just going to be kind of a, a little bit of a meme almost at the same time too, because 2014 there's a popular phrase from Godzilla basically instated by one of the characters, who I'm sure you're all aware of. I'm not going to say who it is exactly, just so you guys can kind of mention that in chat. Unfortunately, the laptop's off, but I'm sure you're all aware of the phrase. I won't tease it anymore. It's let them fight. So I may or may not try and do that kind of voice acting thing myself or just kind of steal sound clip and we'll see with that. But unfortunately, there might be copyright problems with that given the fact that it's from a movie. So it'll probably just be me doing the voiceover at that particular juncture. So essentially, that's going to be the scene that we're working on. It's just kind of a little little teaser, like let them fight and they're both just going to be staring each other down kind of, you know, slowly arching up and giving them the, the stink eye for lack of a better description. And then shortly after that, I'm basically going to proceed with the animation, but I won't do any spoilers. So, yeah. You gonna cooperate with me this time, laptop? So I can actually talk to people in the chat? But now, at least I've given a good description on everything that we'll be doing approximately in this animation. Set up slash tutorial. I don't know what you want to call this. Well, thanks for tuning in for the short time, Kingzilla. I think you're going to miss the exciting part, unfortunately. Uh, oh, darn. I guess I started this probably a little late, but I was wanted to start at 8.30 because I didn't have time to walk my doggo. Oops. Can't say W. That's a forbidden word in this house. Anyway. Um, that's a... I'm assuming you mean Zilla Keeper Games there. That's a, a typing thing, unless it's FW Zilla. I'm not sure what that is. Will you ever make a Pacific Rim? Pacific Rim character, I definitely would actually consider. I haven't actually gotten a whole lot of requests for them. I believe Claymation Zilla is uh, 
the only other guy that has requested the axe-handed one in particular, there hasn't been actually a whole lot of titans from that one. I would honestly really like to make a Jaeger. Jaeger would be really a, a ton of fun. So, maybe at some point. I know there's been a couple, like, comic strips, too, with various other giant robots from the Mobsiverse. So, it would be a lot of fun to make those, too. I said play with the Lego dude. But yeah, there's a lot of weird little Lego trinkets around here. I think we're kind of covering up a bunch of them. These are all uh, victims from the recent claymation takeover, so I was just kind of throwing them off to the side so I didn't get them mixed up later on in animations. Knife head, that's it, right, yeah. Okay, yeah. My mistake. I'm more of a dinosaur expert than a kaiju expert to a certain degree, I must admit. Definitely learned a lot over the past little while, but definitely, definitely more of a dinosaur nerd. Can you tell by the hat? Uh, I think, uh, <laughs> pretty good. Okay, maybe I might do the, a live stream session with the, uh, voiceover. I might make that part of the house tour thing where I'll just kind of sit in the sound closet and basically do that over and over again. It's going to be either I'm going to try and mimic his voice or I'm just going to do something kind of ridiculous and make it my own thing. We'll see. We'll see. I might do a poll, though, here, just to have an extra little bit of fun in the chat for you guys. I already did this once before a couple times. Obviously, the ratio went towards Godzilla, but it's always really close and kind of interesting to see what you guys have. And there's a decent amount of you kind of floating around in and out of the chat or the live stream. So we'll start in a poll where Godzilla will be fighting Shimo, and we'll see what you guys have to say. Then I should probably start doing my setup. And so things might get slightly janky, but hopefully not too bad for you guys. This is kind of a, a new new setup. I've never actually streamed whilst doing stop motion. So hopefully this pans out. And if this video does pretty well, obviously I will do it a lot more. I'll probably do a lot more in regards to whether or not it does well anyway. But if it does, be sure to smash that like button so you can be, well, one person to help out the algorithm and satisfy its unwithering needs. It's a relentless beast that is very hard to tame, unfortunately, I find. But anyway, back to the poll. That's a... Okay, Godzilla vs. Shimo, we got a poll for you all. I thought we were getting a SH Monster Godzilla 2019 for my birthday. Oh, that'd be cool. I, I, I definitely need to... Pro I don't know how much stop motion I would ever really do with a lot of those toys, but it's more or less I just kind of want to start collecting them. I have a decent amount of dinosaur toys that I've collected over the years, but not a lot of Godzilla stuff, which is, you know, slight shame in my opinion. So maybe we'll dig for those toys later, but... We should probably get started with the stop motion because this stuff does take forever. So, time to start playing with the dolls. So, we're going to go over to the characters at this particular juncture in time for you guys. So, basically, what I'm probably going to do is basically kind of play around with the lighting and the camera at the same time. Just kind of figuring out where I kind of want things. Now, first off, these two are set up in a, well, closer configuration than I would normally have, obviously. Because you can see in this angle, they are practically touching nose to nose. But when you're doing shorts, you kind of have to put things in a smaller point of view. So we're just going to back both of these characters up, giving them a slight bit more space for this slight stare down, for lack of a better term. And then we'll basically kind of get them into positions that I want. Maybe clean up the characters just a little bit. Shimo's got some dirty legs over here, so we might do a little bit of that. It's all kind of part of the whole preparation work. I will be back, actually. Okay, well, be, don't, don't, be, uh, don't be gone too long. I am tired. Can you tell I can't speak English properly today? Hey, Blaze Man, thanks for tuning in. Uh, uh, please stop watching me. Nice. I'm not even sure which, how many I've done at this particular point in time. I've been doing this stuff for years, to say the very least. So... Yeah, there's quite a few of them, so, yeah, I know. Now, I was hoping to actually do some of the roars during the stream, but 
I was just clearly not going to have enough room. And even in here, I'm kind of squeezing for space slightly because I'm now talking behind my microphone. So. Uh-oh. Some adjustments are required. Bear with me. Still trying to figure out my setup down here. There we go. Should be slightly better for you guys now. I do apologize. Because unfortunately, I can't keep this in view of the stop motion because that would look really bad. Just have a giant microphone boom sitting out there. Okay. Slightly further back. Now you guys get a good view of all the lamping and stuff like that. So it's really, all, realistically, all I actually use. You don't need anything too complicated for stop motion when it comes to lighting. Just a decent lamp. This one has like five light bulbs on it, so it's pretty excessive with variant LEDs. It won't get too much into lighting because it's kind of technical. And then I have a ring light that seems to be actually quite beneficial too for obviously live streaming and just honestly using it for a good light source because it kind of has replaced my other small lamp that I would usually normally have off to the side here, but it's powerful enough. I probably don't need to necessarily drag that down here. Though I might want it for lighting up the city just a little bit. <clears throat> Jamie wants big boom. <laughs> ah. That's funny, Claymation. Hi, that's funny. Yeah, I got, I'm glad you got a kick out of the Mythbusters. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, watching some of their content. They're one of my favorite uh, people growing up. Big influence. They're both actually special effects guys too, so... Hello, Keeper Games. Looks like you're in time for us to kind of start setting up for stop motion. Just kind of going through a couple chats here and then I'll get set up. We got a poll going on too at this point. I see Godzilla's in the lead. A little bit more than usual at this point. Um, oh, that does not sound very fun. Hopefully, you don't have like COVID or anything too bad. Hopefully, you feel better soon, man. I remember being sick quite, quite some time when there was like two or three weeks where it's just, yeah. It was not fun. I imagine my shorts probably do not sound very good at that particular time frame, unfortunately, I'll admit, but show must go on. Okay, that is the camera app. I want my stop motion app. Now, for a lot of people that are probably curious, the stop motion app that I use is called Stop Motion Studio. So it's that little blue icon up here. And of course, if you scroll through here, I have a whole bunch of different projects that I've been working on, mostly the Godzilla takeover of various scenes. And this is kind of the latest one that I've been playing around with. So this is the first scene that I worked on, but we're not working on that today. We're starting a new project. Slight teaser for you guys on seeing the roar animation. So usually what I like to do at the beginning here, before I kind of get too far away with the mic, is just kind of play around with camera angles and figure out where I want to put my tripod and my phone just to make sure that I have the best view possible. Then adjust the lighting and characters and everything from there. So that's what we're going to be doing at this particular juncture, is just kind of playing around with our with the way things look, because that's obviously kind of important. Probably move this around a little bit so it's not quite as awkward. Hopefully you guys aren't staring at the back of my head too much. Or or a lamp. But this is kind of a behind the scenes peek. Look at it that way. You are basically like the producer, you're or film person that's in charge of the animator, I don't know. I'm not sure. I can't think of technical look terms right now. I'm too tired. But you're in charge. You're the guy that's watching over the shoulder, basically, of everything that I'm doing at this particular moment in time. Be a good way to view it. Eventually, I want to get a lot more lighting set up, but kind of, yeah, in the midst of using a bunch of different lights. And let's not smack the mic. 
So we're gonna put the ring light over here by Shimo because it's a little less powerful than obviously my big, big ridiculous lamp set over there. And I notice it's a little better to have more light focus on the dark character because if you have too much light glaring over a big white one, that seems to cause a lot of really nasty reflections to a certain degree. So that way, it might not be the best set up for you entirely because it just kind of causes a lot of problems, unfortunately, at that point. So, get you guys a slight better look of what's going on. Hopefully, my sound quality isn't terrible, but I am in a basement that has no soundproofing. Okay. My laptop is not working, of course, or cooperating. But now we're just going to essentially kind of play around with the camera angle, make sure things are in focus. Let's see what things look like. That's actually not too bad. I do not want my granny curtains that I don't think you guys can see up there. It kind of destroys the illusion. Having that big, ugly green screen doesn't help, but that's my old SCP set, and I need to finish that fight so I can just try, take that thing down. So maybe that'll be my next Christmas animation. But yeah, I think what I'm going to do is right here. The here is pretty good. What I might do, too, is kind of get rid of some of the flames kicking around. Maybe not all of them, but I don't want that many either, because that's just one extra piece I also have to kind of worry about. I might keep it at the beginning just for the appeal, but... As the fight progresses, don't be surprised if some of those get put out. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do... I don't know which tripod I really want to use for this situation yet. It'd be nice if I could use the little guy. Don't think that's going to be the case, though. Obviously, I'll make sure that this is far more stable than what we're dealing with right now. I just kind of want to see if it's going to work. Because it's nicer to work with the smaller tripod in that environment. Yeah, not really very far. I could try and switch cameras. Like that one. See what it looks like in the wide. Personally, I personally don't like that as much. This is, I guess, maybe a little bit of a nitpicky part, and maybe not some of you are going to enjoy watching this nearly as much, but now you understand how, how methodical I am with a lot of this stuff, but it's always best to make sure you have your setup really well done before you get too far into stop motion, because... The big thing with stop motion is once you well start, you can't really stop. There's no reset button. It just will ruin everything. So, but that little tripod is unfortunately I don't think is going to do the trick. So we're gonna grab my essentially normal one, which is back there. I'll see if I can get my get my laptop going too at the same time so I can. Rejoin you guys for a slight moment in time. Be nice if it could stay plugged in, but I still have to kind of get more extension cords for my basement studio, apparently. So, it's probably one of the very few straight, uh, streaming setups where you're going to see the back of a ring light as opposed to, <laughs> to being in it. But, welcome to Moose Motion Animation. Nothing here is really used conventionally. Which is usually probably a bit of a fun experience, I would imagine, for some people. It's out of the norm, to put it that way. Hi. I know you're there. You're such a pretty girl. Mm hmm. <laughs> Hi. 
Yes, I know. You got a pretty smile, don't you? Such a happy girl. Tiamat. Actually, that one's been requested a couple times. Tiamat would be actually a pretty cool project. I like dragons. Dragons are pretty fun, and it's like a big Japanese dragon, and it's on my to-do list, so. I think that one's got like two or three suggestions so far. There hasn't been too many, but there's been a couple. I think mainly because of this whole Godzilla x Kong thing that popped up. Tiamat, and no surprise, Kong has been the biggest request as of lately, so. Apart from Doug. But we won't even mention Doug. Because I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I know what will happen. Use that app. It's a great it's a great app. I actually pay for the extra a little bit and in retrospect I don't know if it's necessarily worth the extra little bit of money because I don't think I actually use any of the sound clips or music from it, because if you do, you're probably gonna get copyrighted. Or the music in particular, I've had some problems with that, so I don't use it. There's been like maybe one or two, three sound effects that I kind of use, but most of them I generally just kind of produce on my own and or edit through kind of just converting sound clips from YouTube into MP3s. So that's usually kind of the way that I would personally go about using it. You don't necessarily need the, the paid version. It does help, but... There's one thing too I noticed because I recently made a big switch, so this was probably some helpful insight for some of you. Because uh, I was using a iPhone Pro for a number of years, this old thing, and with the uh, stop motion app, I was able to actually edit sounds far more effectively using the iPhone in comparison to my Android. I know that sounds weird. Yes, you can still do sounds, add sounds, but you can't necessarily edit them as well with the Android in comparison to the iPhone. The iPhone, you could basically kind of blend things in. You could do, you know, fade in, fade out, and various other things like that. Small little options that don't usually make the world of a difference, but if you want good quality, it does make, you know, kind of a big difference for somebody like me, because usually I like to blend multiple sounds kind of into each other to make it more unique and help submerse people into the environment. So that's the part that kind of sucks with the Android, unfortunately, where I've noticed I can't actually do the fade in, fade out with the noise or the sound effects on the Android. I have to use a third party app. I mean, the vast majority of the time, all of my stop motion animations would get sent to a, you know, iMovie maker into the iPhone to finish the editing process, but there's far more with the actual other app, which isn't terrible. I get more options with the Android, but yeah. Found that kind of annoying. So basically I don't actually keep any good sound quality clips when I'm doing animations on the Android. I just kind of get a sample of what I need and then I work from there. So yeah, hopefully that kind of gets that. That's a very complicated breakdown on the two apps. Probably went in more detail than needed, but that's something I recently ran into and was a little frustrated by, to be honest. Oof, that's a name. I, I don't know if I, <laughs> I didn't bring my, oh, I have sticky notes. Do I have a pen? Okay, I can write that down. Just give me a sec. In my secret room. Okay, I'm back. Given my environment, I don't have access to most of my normal tools. So I will do a little bit of homework after that one. Uh, Claymation Zilla. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm kind of a way, ways away from the mic now. Don't you die on me, stay alive. Uh, shop speedy, I know. We'll do our adventure after. Yeah. 
Somebody wants their adventure time. Okay, so we are using the big tripod. I have to swap ends on this thing. Yeah. Welcome to my uh, stop motion dungeon. This is where next month of my life is probably going to be spent. <laughs> that in the sound closet. Yes, my sound room is a closet. Oh, no. Do I have a screwdriver down here? That's the next question. Apparently I don't really need it right now, but I'm going to. Uh-oh. No, no, I have them right there. Amongst my toy cars. So yeah. Just gotta swap out the heads. This does work, but it's just, it's an old one. That one's way nicer, holds things steady. And I don't want things moving. Cause that's a big, big and important step for anything when it comes to doing stop motion. Is you really need to make sure your camera is rock steady. Unless you want camera shake, there is some of that to a certain degree, but. Make the earth out of clay. That'd be an interesting, make a little mini globe. That would definitely be very interesting. I don't know, maybe that's what you're referring to? Unless you're referring to Earth Godzilla. Oh, that's my Miss Kitty Cat. Should probably make sure Mr. Mitz is maybe not hanging outside here real quick. Unfortunately, he pulled with Mr. Houdini last night. So, he's out in the wilderness. Hopefully he's doing okay. Not the first time. It's springtime. He usually kind of has a bad habit of sneaking out through windows. So. It's usually supper time. He shows up. Because he wants food. No surprise. So, bear with me. I just want to take a peek out to my window real quick. So, I will give you guys a quick view of... The monsters in the meantime, hopefully. I'll be back real fast. Nope, no Mr. Middies. He has not returned from his adventures. Argy dog. Okay. See if I can get my laptop to say hello again. Hello. <sighs> okay. It's been a long day. Still haven't even fully set up yet. Come on. Oh, um, I don't know. Keeper Games is still around. Mr. Middy's, uh, escaped last night. He pulled a Mr. Houdini. Dating myself, Houdini is a old escape artist. So, yeah. He, he, he's out in the wilderness. Comment from, uh, quote from Jack Black in... What book is that? Nacho Libre. Usually my kitties are kind of indoor cats, but he's the only one that has a habit of just going, nah, I think I, I think I want to go have some fun. It's like, okay. 
Hope that you're doing fine, buddy. I live out in the sticks. <laughs> Won't digress too much on that topic from there, unfortunately. Sure, he'll be fine. Okay. So now that we kind of got our camera angle worked out, let's do wherever we want things. I will make sure kind of put my characters in the, the neutral position that I want them in and then I might have to kind of go through the cars either make sure that they're not going to move so that means putting little bits of clay on each one of these things because my hands are going to be coming in and out and you don't want any of these things to get bumped and then move around and have to kind of reset things that's just awkward it is kind of a nice aesthetic to have in between them but at the same time too it might not be kind of worth the risk if that makes any sense so we're just going to play around a little bit here, get things adjusted, and see how it works out. Stay alive, that top. Maybe I can get this thing in the angle where I can actually see you guys still. I think I can manage. Got a lot of a lot of different little film pieces of equipment down here now. This is not good for my, my knees either. I'm gonna take that and use my slippers for knee pads. Aha! Oops. <laughs> I don't know. Nacho Libre actually is probably I'm gonna have to watch that movie. I haven't watched it for a couple of years now. Probably one of my favorite movies, in all honesty. I, I love that movie. <laughs> Nacho! Oh, God. That's gonna get clipped. Hopefully. <laughs> but, yeah. I love Nacho. He's cool. He's out in the wilderness. It's just ridiculous. Jack Black's always awesome. Funny guy. Okay. Now we're going to do some minor lighting adjustments. Hopefully things aren't terrible for everyone over here. Not greatest. Ah. Mm -hmm. Apologize for the awkward camera angles. We're still in the learning phases of streaming whilst I do stop motion. So. Just gonna leave that alone for now. At least you can kind of see what's going on through the camera angle. As you can see, that's what happens when you have too much lighting blurred on a white character. Obviously, it's really kind of glaring for you guys, but it actually looks pretty good through the phone. So that's the important thing. At least right now. I know it's kind of an awkward thing. Most people want the streaming to be the most part that's lit, lit, lit very well, but in this case, I actually can't do that because if I have too much background lighting, then I'm going to cause a shadow. That's another actually important thing I should probably rant on about whilst I play around with my characters, is that's very important, is your wardrobe, believe it or not, is you can't wear any bright colors. There's a reason I'm always, always wearing just black, because it doesn't cause any shadows or reflection, so... When you're doing stop motion, for anyone who is into doing their own stop motion animations that are watching, and I think that's a good chunk of you, wear black. It's the only color you're allowed to use at this point. Used to bright, bright colors. Not anymore. Okay, I keep bumping the microphone. My sorry. My bad. I'm gonna move that over here just a little bit. So, trying to get Chima's footing properly here is a little awkward. Seems to be having some issues with her ankles. This is usually a fairly time consuming process, too, because you want to make sure your characters aren't gonna move anywhere. 
So what I'm doing right now is just kind of massaging the back of her foot to make sure that that's kind of mushed into the ground. Not appropriate, maybe, but kind of helps out. To avoid jank, because that's something you don't want. Actually, I could probably do myself a favor and move the microphone. But I also have to bear in mind, oh wait, it's not even attached. Never mind. I'm worried about that. Hey, okay. cool. That frees up a lot of space. See my mic attachment probably at this point. The big mic boom just kind of hanging out in the background there. Oops. Probably should have plugged that in before starting. But yeah, we're no we're now more mobile people. <laughs> probably a good thing for down here. So now I can sit and be comfortable. <laughs> Hey, right. probably want to get the laptop out of that area too because yeah. Another thing is you want all your lighting kind of placed behind you. Like, well, in front of you, nothing behind you because you don't want to cast that shadow like I even stated before. That'll get you that weird, weird flickering. Which is something you definitely don't really want. Now I'm going to remove their glowing eyes too, because we're not quite at that stage of things. Just for now. Do a couple more adjustments on the legs, probably. So. Like I stated before, setup is a real big thing for... for stop motion, because once you have things set in place, it cannot move. It cannot go anywhere. Your lights can't move. Your camera can't move. Unless your camera is supposed to move and follow things in that particular scene. But more often than not, you generally want it to be completely rock steady. So now we're going to do a little bit of surgery on Godzilla's eyeballs. Basically just going to cut up that uh, pink glowing plaster seam bit. Or my makeshift glowing bit. I should probably say, but... Either way, you get the illusion. Usually it's not that difficult with this guy. It's kind of not the easiest to task because he's got quite a lot of folds on his face. It's kind of like a pug almost, but far more intimidating. I have to clean off. Oh, those tiny little remnants too, which is always kind of not very much fun, but necessary evil. Okay. Probably going to, I don't know, you guys can't really see it, but I don't want to move my light, but he has the glowing eye on the other side, and I don't, yeah, we'll remove it. Wasn't going to, but now I am. It won't be on for a while. I'll just think of future me here. There we go. Uh, 
Uh-oh. I hear the pug wandering around upstairs. Uh-oh. I think I hear Mr. Mitz. God damn it. Okay. I have to see again. So I may may I may not be gone for a bit. I apologize, I'm back. Hopefully, maybe this kitty knows something I don't, but he's not out there. It's getting a little windy, so. <clears throat> Might rain this evening, that'll probably bring him home. <laughs> yeah. Soggy kitty. couple wrinkle imperfections here so I just kind of again it's one of those things stop motion has a lot of setup because once you get going it's there can't really get rid of it very easily without it looking really really awkward or sticking out like a sore thumb when something is not supposed to move then it starts moving is the best way I think I can kind of label that Is getting confidence. Oh no. I need more plugins down here. Foo foo, what you doing, sweetie? Don't really want to be doing stairs the entire stream. <laughs> I know you're there. Yep. Hi. Yes. Okay, you're really close to the camera, so you don't do that. I know you're happy, but no. Nope. Don't. Keep your wriggle butt away from the stand, please. Thank you. Is in tight. Okay. You're very pesty, I know. I'm trying to get things done, but nobody allows it in this house. 71% for Godzilla. Kingzilla? Hello, we're just kind of doing some repairs on uh, Godzilla at the moment, kind of getting ready for the next setup. I might end up just kind of doing a couple frames to give you guys a idea of how this stop motion stuff works and how little you should be moving your characters. I guess this is more or less just kind of how much work goes into prepare preparation, which is honestly probably the biggest and most important step. Because having a, a controlled environment for your lighting, for your characters, for everything for this kind of stuff usually is the best result that you can ask for. This is a tall order. Seems strange, but it's a lot harder than you would expect. So, uh, of course, his fingers are all mauled up there, too. Those don't actually have any wire in them, so that's 
Part of the reason they don't is that happen on a regular basis and it just becomes really hard to fix your hands. So I, my fingers don't have any bone structure in them, so they're really easy to fix. Okay. Now that we've mushed that hand more or less back into shape, as my hug is making noises upstairs. Okay, so now we get an idea how long all this stuff does take. We're an hour in and we still haven't actually done any stop motion. We so far have just gotten our characters kind of ready on the stage, got our lighting set up. And everything else in between. I mean, it doesn't help technically that I'm streaming this either, I would imagine. It's going to take a little bit longer when you're doing that kind of stuff, too. But you get the gist. It's not, not a fast task. Still think I have more cleaning to do on Godzilla's face here. Stupid Goji, thanks for tuning in. Just kind of getting things set up for my next stop motion animation scene today. Unfortunately, there's been a couple. A lot of repairing. I should probably go see what that pug's trying to do. Getting me worried. She's she's it. She's my old lady at this point. She can't see very well, so her wandering me out, wandering around is kind of like oh no, hurt yourself. Sure, she'll be fine. She's probably just trying to find me. Like, I hear him. He's talking, but he's not up here. Where is he? Yeah. As soon as I start talking, she stops. Okay. Still not fully satisfied here with... A little bit of that pink red mints and tool marking. I think this is uh, turning in, uh, into a how to set up your stop motion more than actually doing any, unfortunately, given for time's sake. If I didn't if I didn't have to do a 9 to 5 and work, wake up at 4.30 in the morning, I would say yeah, I would continue, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. So this scene is probably going to take me about two to three, two to three hours to animate fully. Just for 75 frames, oh no. Dirty, dirty black plasticine hands. I need almost like paper towel to a degree because one thing I should probably hear mention briefly when you're dealing with two characters that have two very, very different color contrasts, you're gonna have some mixing, whether or not you want it. It's gonna happen, unfortunately. Mainly because well, clay gets warm and your hand just kind of soaks up every little bit of pour into this. So, at that point, once you press into the white clay, all that black stuff that was hidden inside your hands then gets mushed into that. So black and white are probably the two worst colors to actually ever be working alongside with. Why don't you like the mouse pad thing? Come on! And I don't want to move my ring light because that's kind of in position for stop motion stuff. Bad laptop. That is not what I asked you to do. 
Okay, well, that's not working for me, apparently. <laughs> ah! <sighs> Things have not gone well. Well, I mean... I just haven't accomplished as much as I was hoping. I'll just put it that way. And my computer's being annoying. I know, Holly. One thing at a time, sweetie. Alright, so I'm going to slightly rake away my thumbprint on Shimo's face. And then kind of get her into position and then maybe clean up a little bit more of Godzilla, get the camera set up, and then show you guys how much I will be moving them bit by bit. And then we'll probably cut things off there. One, two, three. I'll be back in the chat right away here, guys. Just had to go through this. I'm going to bring my mouse down here. I hate using mouse pads on these things. Never does what I want it to. Yeah, it should be, should be out within two, three weeks. I know that seems like kind of a big stretch, but there will be some videos kind of coming out in the meantime. Maybe, maybe a trailer or two will be there, too. Just a sneak peek. I'll probably be doing a little bit more streaming, and hopefully I'll actually be able to get in some actual stop motion. I'll probably be a little bit more prepared for it. Maybe tomorrow we'll see how I feel. Where I'll probably be doing some, like, walking or running animations at that point, so that'll probably be far more interesting on what I'd be initially animating tonight anyway. So, yeah. That might have, probably will happen tomorrow. We'll see. I don't want to set anything in stone just yet. If it's scheduled, more than likely I'll make it. Yeah. Okay. So, I think, yeah. What we've done, this this stream is basically, I've shown you how, how to get everything kind of set up. So right now we're just kind of, what I'm doing is more or less, probably, oh no. We are learning, people. Okay. This is not working well. Don't know what to do with you just yet. I have to figure that out. Person looking over my shoulder. So you can kind of see the one character, but not very well. It's a little frustrating, personally, on my end. I want to give you guys a better angle, but I can't put you out there because then you're going to be in the stop motion thing, and I don't want you there. You're not allowed to be in the animation. <laughs> I mean, kind of, but yeah. So. Okay. I think we pretty much got everything set up for the most part. A little bit of... That's a bad spot. I don't want to see that. So now what I'm probably going to do is fasten my little toy cars here next. And just stick those down with uh, some plasticine clay. Just on the undercarriage side so you can't actually see them... See what's holding them down, but that way when I'm sticking my hands in and out of frame all the time, I'm not nearly as concerned about bumping them or having them move around unintentionally. Is 
this one appears to be on fire. So the fire we can kind of just leave loosely hanging out there. That doesn't matter. That's going to probably be moving around a lot. So if that gets bumped, it's just kind of like, oh, well, I don't have to do that again. And for the truck, I can kind of get sneaky. We don't have to put it necessarily underneath it. We can just put it on the back side of it because the camera is going to be facing this way. So we don't need to worry about that because no one's going to actually see that part of things. So we can kind of make the other side of the truck look really dirty. But the important thing is, as long as it's basically going to stay in that position. Unless Godzilla or Shimo is making it move, it's not supposed to move. Put it that way. Now, the flipped over convertible might be a slightly more difficult task because it doesn't have a roof. Let's see if it stays. I'd like to keep it there. But, if it's too much work, stop motion's already enough work as is. I don't want any more on the Lotus, it doesn't really need any. The problem is I can't add a whole whole lot to the front part of it either because you got that hood that's just sticking up slightly so you'll see it unless it's like completely black plaster seam but even then you're probably going to notice that okay that actually seems pretty solid Now, I guess as a more serious person would probably actually glue their props down. But, I would like to reuse these. <laughs> okay. Now, unfortunately, my hands need to be washed before I can probably really get into the actual animation portion. But, at least everything is basically now actually set up for my stop motion. So... I'll give you guys, ooh, as we almost smashed the light into Shimo, a slightly better view of everything going on here. So, yeah, that's essentially what the scene is going to look like as I try to join into the chat as my computer continues not to cooperate. But basically, they're both going to slowly arc their heads up and get rowl at each other. So again, this is going to be about 75 frames, basically just kind of doing the whole introduction of the fight with that you know, little meme of, uh, whatchamacallit, the character from 2014 Godzilla doing Let Them Fight. And of course, there's a huge delay on my end of here with the live stream feed. Well, actually, let me fast forward it. Okay, that's not a good view for you guys. Pop it down just a little bit. There we go. That's better. So yeah, that's basically what this scene's going to look like. All the cars are essentially now fastened in place. Our characters are now set. Lighting is all in place and actually looks pretty nice and pretty for the most part. So the only thing that was basically missing is now my cell phone, which will be sitting in, well, apologize for the dink, in the middle of all of this. And basically, kind of give you guys an idea of what will basically be taking play by play as if you were essentially me. Now, I'll be basically coming in, you know, moving my hand just ever so slightly, and then Godzilla's head probably up again just ever so slightly, probably like a mill or two, and then do the same thing for Shimo. And then I'll come back, take a couple pictures, again, move Godzilla's arm like a millimeter or two, move his face back up just a little bit, whilst playing with the smoke, as well as Shimo. And just bit by bit by bit, after about 75 to 100 frames, that'll essentially kind of give me the whole 
introduction to Lego City and the let them fight kind of more or less. So I think that pretty much sums up how I set up my stop motion animation cartoons. Fortunately, I didn't really get around to actually doing any animations. I'll be doing that probably off stream at this point, unless I can find a way to kind of pause things cleverly. I don't know if I have that option personally quite yet on my stream, so. Hello, Gaming with Adam. You are back again. Basically, everything's now set up for my actual stop motion. So, took a long time. But all the cars basically can't move, and our characters are set, lighting's all set. So, they're pretty much ready to take about 100 pictures, give or take. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, if you have any questions or requests, now's a good time to fire away, I do say, whilst I'm hanging out in the stream. Let's see what our poll's at. 75% Godzilla. Wow, okay, this one was a lot more one-sided than any of my previous ones. Usually it was about 60 to 55. So, we got more, more Team Zilla character fans, I guess, in the chat today. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, yes, hello, honey. I see you there. Big stinky. Who is bigger? That's a good question. Um, it's a pretty close tie between these two characters. I think Shimo might be slightly just in overall size, perhaps not mass. Mass-wise, they're both pretty much the same amount of clay. Like, they both take quite a lot. Now, one other thing, too, I should mention for setup is it's important to make sure that your device is not going to die on you. Now, that was a big problem with my iPhone before because I would basically use my headset and just take pictures with it and not have my phone plugged in the entire time. Luckily, this S23 is pretty handy and comes with a little S Pen, and that's not tightened down at all. Okay, I have to fix that later. Anyway. But yeah, this is really handy because basically this becomes my remote. I can take pictures just by pushing the little button on the S Pen, which I can demonstrate here. You can see it goes click, which is really nice. Obviously, we don't need that frame, but you get the gist of it. This is a nice tool to have because then you're basically completely wireless. And my phone's been pretty much on all day doing things. And I've been doing a lot of editing since I got home. So we're going to plug that in so that way it's just an extra bit of security and this phone also has a couple of extra nice features. Not sponsored by Samsung or anything, but basically once it's plugged in this phone will not shut off. It just stays on all the time. So that's another thing that you also really want to make sure that stays on is your camera. Because if that thing does shut off, especially with these smartphones I find, it's going to cause some flicker because basically the camera has to refocus on whatever it was trying to do. And unless you have a specific focal point that you've been focusing on the entire time that hasn't been moving, it's going to give you that weird shutter effect. So again, set up, set up, set up, set up, set up, set up. And hopefully that stream has kind of orchestrated that for everyone here. That set up is usually probably one of the biggest things that you kind of have to focus on when you're doing stop motion animation. Now. One other thing, too, I should probably mention, I don't know if I had a hat strip with clay down here for it, is you gotta make sure your tripod's not gonna move anywhere either, which I've had some bad experiences with in the past. So, normally your tripods are pretty, pretty rock steady, it's not gonna move around or do anything as long as it's sitting there, but unfortunately, if you move around or if you have pets that are generally walking around or wagging their tails really violently, Hi. Yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> um, you might want to get just a little bit of extra security. So what I usually do is just, yeah, yeah, the menace over there, is just take little strips of clay and then just kind of wrap it around the bottom half of the tripod and just kind of mold it into place and the floor. Now, for you, those of you who have parents, you may or may not want to do that. Luckily, I'm, yeah a single guy that lives on his own, so I can make as much of a mess as I want because I'm the only guy that has to clean it up afterwards, so no one can yell at me anymore. But that's what I do just to kind of make sure everything's going to stay in place because, yeah, you don't want that camera to move. Yeah, that's 
why do you do this? So, all right, Freddy Fazbear. Hmm. <laughs> uh, did you buy the Godzilla and Chimo, or did you make that? They're both uh, completely hand sculpted uh, claymation figures. I would like to show. Obviously, you're pretty new to this channel. Uh, but there's complete demonstrations on how they're all made. I'd like to give you a better look at what they look like, but they're kind of center stage right now, all set up for the next stop motion animation scene. So hopefully that answers your question. Yes, they are completely handmade. Godzilla's 16 inches tall and about seven pounds, six pounds of clay. Shimo is about the same height, even longer. I haven't actually done an official length measurement on her. I probably should at some point because she's really big and it's probably about the same amount of clay, but is overall larger. I just was a little bit smarter and more productive with her build, for lack of a better description. And you can see, well, everything, how they're made. There's a couple live streams. So yeah, be sure to go check those out. Tiamat, okay. Number two for Tiamat. We got a couple points for Tiamat. I think she's now got four today. So yeah, cool. Nacho, blah, blah, blah. Okay, wait to see some motion gaming. Okay, well, I think we're pretty much gonna call our quits, unfortunately, for this, because, yeah, I got a lot of other things to do. Unfortunately, we didn't get exactly any stop motion done today, but I might have to retitle this stream after I'm done and it's done uploading. It'll be how to set up stop motion, not stop motion, but I will try to set up another stream a little earlier for, well, maybe not earlier, but have things set up for a live stream tomorrow where I'll actually be doing stop motion animation so that way you guys can actually see these characters kind of come to life very 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 slowly essentially they're only going to be moving millimeters at a time it's going to be very painstakingly slow but at least it's going to give you guys a good opportunity to see what kind of effort and what goes into making a very highly detailed smooth stop motion animation so I subbed awesome Thank you. I appreciate your support there, uh, Freddy Fazbear. It's a cool name, by the way. I know you, I got wanted to make a couple of those, and we may or may not have a couple of them face up against my other movie monsters. But there's lots of content for you to check out here. I do deep dives on dinosaurs, monsters, and all sorts of other things. I used to do a lot of drag racing cars, and that's what this city was originally built for. However, it's now being demolished by giant kaijus. So, yeah, that's where we are at this point. Hopefully tomorrow I can have another live stream set up for everybody where I'll actually be doing the stop motion animation. I'll probably have this scene done for tonight, so what we'll be doing tomorrow at that point is more or less some actual, probably more exciting animations where things will be moving forward and charging at each other. So I think that's probably gonna be a far more interesting video. Things will be moving fast as far as stop motion regards go, so yeah. It'll be slow, but probably a little more fast-paced than usual, which might be a little more entertaining for you guys. But we'll see how much I am interactive with the chat. Might be a little bit less social at that point, for lack of a better term, because I generally notice when I get into the zone of doing stop motion, I get really quiet and I don't do anything else, and I'm just intensely staring at my characters. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah. But you haven't experienced that yet, but we'll see what happens. But hopefully you guys can tune in tomorrow. Hopefully I have a setup ready a lot earlier so to speak. But yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks for tuning in. And if you guys enjoy the stream, be sure to smash that like button, comment below what you think of the project, share with friends, and well, yeah, all that other self-promotion jazz. So anyway, thank you guys. I'll see you next time. That's enough from me. Till next time, take it easy. Boop.